Hi friends, it's Jennifer Swales from Honeybee Astrology back to talk about the Libra new moon, which is a solar eclipse happening today, October 2nd. Um, this eclipse is happening at 10 degrees of Libra. And this is the final eclipse in the Aries and Libra eclipse series, which started in October of 2023. So um, what does that mean? It means incredibly good news for the cardinal signs that the eclipses are leaving their axis, which is always a relief. But it's also, it's an interesting eclipse in the sense that it is a new moon eclipse, meaning that the sun and the moon are together at 10 degrees of Libra. And so the moon is not uh, visible to the naked eye, right? But, um, a new moon is a new seeding, right? It's something has ended, so something new can begin. So, but because it is with the south node, and it is really with the south node, which is at six degrees of Libra, this is a real um, kind of purging, a, a real kind of letting go, let go and let God for sure. But of partnerships or ways of being or um, ways of communicating ourselves, who we are, right? When we think about the glyph of Libra, think about the straight line, meaning the kind of intention that is your soul when it incarnates. And then because Libra is very much about one-on-one -on -one partnerships, you look at the other person and they seem to be moving parallel. And then you go off course with the kind of joined vision for what the partnership is. Or you can think about it like this. Let's say um, it's the mirror. People are a mirror to us, right? And so when you look in your in the mirror yourself, this is why people don't think they take good pictures because when they look in the mirror all the time, they focus on the things that they like about themselves, right? Oh, I have, this is pretty, that's not so much, I'll do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, but whenever you try to do any kind of remediation from the things that you don't like, they still become, uh, they're always uh spots of contention, right? Sources of contention. And so when you look in the mirror, you focus on the things that you like, you have a way of coping with the things that you dislike. But when you see yourself in a photograph, that's more what other people see of you. And that can be really disconcerting, right? Because we can't really perceive ourselves, right? We have blind spots. They're called the eighth house, right? The 12th house, the sixth house, the second house. These are what's called houses in inversion, meaning that the first house, the house that is us, uh, that we have the helm of the ship over, we can't see these houses, right? But the people who are in these houses, they can definitely see us, right? So when you think about yourself being a soul incarnate here to learn certain lessons, and then you come and you react to other people and then you move maybe off of your center and then you try to come back to center to be parallel with the soul's intention, right? That's the glyph of Libra from the individual standpoint. So this moon, um, we just had the Mercury Cassini on the 30th. So that was Sunday. Uh, this is today's Wednesday. I'm recording it the day of the eclipse. So some somewhere Saturday, Sunday, Monday, you will have had a conversation that you kind of let people know uh, what's what <laughs> or this new sense of I'm choosing my level of participation here. And that might not be spoken, right? I just had a, um, I was meeting with a friend last week and we were discussing quite a lot and it was interesting because we had had a meeting on January 24th. Well, January 24th was three days after Pluto um, went into um, Aquarius. So, you know, there's these major things happening and maybe people who aren't as rigorous students of astrology, they're still aware, they're still feeling the vibratory energy, right? And so we checked in on the 24th and then we checked in last week, which is we we're in eclipses, right? I always get a lot of kind of check-ins around eclipse time. And we had this really interesting conversation because she's a mutable sign. And so we were discussing her and two other people in her world who are mutable signs, right? Which means Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Pisces. And it was just days after the Pisces eclipse. And so 
she said that she had come to this realization where the three of them were talking kind of to and at each other and they were all saying the same thing but their ways of kind of delivering the message or what they were really needing from what was being spoken were so vastly different and i said that's the gift of saturn right now saturn and pisces is allowing us to have some stability and some kind of bottom line in this whirlwind that is Pisces, particularly with Neptune in such late degrees. So just the fact that she was aware of, I suppose, the meaning and the context and how they were kind of so different from each other, that where things could get lost in the translation, that was the gift of of Saturn, right? Blessing her right now, saying like the disconnect between the language styles or what or the articulation of the needs is is, is wildly different, but the kind of um, bottom line of why you're engaging each other is the same. And that was a, just a gorgeous epiphany. Uh, jump to uh, today when I texted her and I saw something that she had posted online on fa on Facebook and um, it was almost like everything I was trying to tell her in our meeting was kind of brought to life in the sense that she didn't say it to me when we met a couple days ago and that was fascinating because she's an eighth house person as I am and so we eighth house, everyone has an eighth house. So there are aspects of ourselves that we don't necessarily see. And, and that being a mutable sign, you know, we're so used to kind of bending for other people or taking the fixed aspects of everyone else and, and working around them, incorporating them into something that's workable. And I say that because Libra has that tendency too. And that's where this eclipse is. Libra gets a really bad rap for kind of people pleasing and uh, for being passive aggressive, right? But the truth of the matter is that a Libra is always putting their relationship first in whatever the context is. Wherever our Libra relationships are, we put them first before ourselves because in Aries, we are uniquely ourselves. And so by the time we get to Libra or wherever Libra is in your chart, you are very much considering yourself and the other, and you're seeing them as a, either, a, either a mirror to yourself or a kind of funhouse mirror. But that's the kind of difficult thing that uh, eclipses can show us is where we've kind of been fooling ourselves, right? And with the South Node, there is a need to kind of see the shit you know, uh, the, the, the base part, the kind of things that we don't want to show other people, particularly because the ruler of this eclipse, Venus is in Scorpio, right? So she's, she's in exile, wandering around. Just think about yourself as Venus being in this kind of filthy city, right? That's not your home and you're trying to get what you need but you're dealing with like almost every life or death scenario that you could kind of be considering, right? And so what could be being communicated to us right now is this kind of life or death scenario. And I wanna just encourage you to pause and to remember that this is the last eclipse of this cycle, okay? So if you can think back to, um, this eclipse cycle started in 2023. So jump back 18 years. Where were you in 2020, 2015, right? How has your life progressed in those, in those years, in those 18 years? Is that right? Did I do that math right? That doesn't seem right. Oh, is it 2005? Oh, right, my mistake, 2005, 2006. Oh, right. So then we get to, oh, I see, I see, I did 2005 and 2006. Well, when you think about it like that, if you can put your perspective back onto 2005, we were just about whatever was happening in terms of self and other people, we were only just a mere two years away from Pluto moving into 
Capricorn for the first time. He dipped his toe in Capricorn in the first time in 2007. So because the eclipses were in Aries, which is a fire sign, and Libra, which is an air sign, you might get a pretty good kind of indicator of what was, what kind of is wrapping up for you now. And also too, it's a, a prelude, excuse me, to 2025, because we're gonna have major changes and I'm gonna go through all of that as well. If you can bear with me, I'm very excited. Um, I don't even think I said that I'm Jennifer Swales uh, and uh, please like and share and subscribe and do all the things. Um, I'm terrible at that, but of course I'm here not to present a kind of formulaic state of the end and I'll give you five tips videos because I'm not that person. I don't give a shit about things like that. I shoot from the hip and from my own experience. And so you're kind of getting my enthusiasm right now for the major changes that are on just right on the horizon. And this is actually kind of the beginning of that with this new moon. We are setting seeds of intention in an air sign about how we're going to see ourselves, conduct ourselves, particularly with other people. And also too, in terms of um, enemies, right? Because the seventh house, the Libra house has to do with open enemies. Think about like a spouse who is no longer a spouse, right? And so how do you conduct yourself? How do you choose that level of participation with these people? And more to the point with the South Node, with the past, can whatever is going to happen and show up for you in these next few days, but really in the next six months, can you come to some level of peace, right? Libra is kind of the, you know, it, it fluctuates to the energy of Aquarius, right? The waves where you're moving in sync, but you're also very separate, right? So can we get to the kind of peaceful, contented above perspective of the people that we were in the past and the ways we behaved in the past in the kind of flaws in our thinking of how we saw ourselves in the past can we rectify that now can we see that that's what we needed to survive and we no longer need those things have we kind of firmed up or shored up our foundations right with mars and cancer uh any kind of inflammation around these kind of themes of home and family and mother and father, they might be rearing their heads right now, right? From my perspective, um, as a mutable sign, I'm looking at it as the last eclipse was the first kind of uh, prelude into the upcoming eclipses, but also I'm thinking about uh, a person I care for who is um, a mutable sign. And so... He's an, he works for the International Longshoremen's Association, the ILA. And this, this eclipse has kind of, the uh, Pisces eclipse started off the, the strike that's happening right now in the ILA. So from the perspective of the strike, I'm just going to touch this upon this briefly because it really does speak to Pluto. Okay. So the strike is happening now. It's it's happening in Libra. The ruler of Libra is in Scorpio, right? So in Pluto being in Capricorn, right? So we're looking at kind of this period from 2007, which is culminating now. I mean, Pluto is going to turn direct on October 11th. So we are literally days into the last, we're, we're wrapping up the retrograde. We're up per, up questions of our own kind of security and stability, but also power and powerlessness with the forces that be, right? And so here he is, he's a mutable sign, but he's also a fire sign, right? And so this is going to speak to what was happening for him undoubtedly in 2005, because that's when those Aries Libra eclipses were happening, but also 2007 and what Capricorn has brought right? And so now here we are with the International Longshoremen's Association. They are striking because systematically over this whole Pluto and Capricorn period, the shipping companies have been charging just exorbitant rates for what the ports um, 
can charge for container ships to bring in containers, but they've been very kind of almost punitive in, in, their, in their wages with the workers. So this strike, you know, has been clearly building since then. But when you think about 2020, right, let, let, let's take this above view perspective of what's happening for all of us. 2020, we have the Saturn and Pluto conjunction, right? So that is the pandemic. Everything shuts down. Well, the ILA didn't shut down. The ports don't shut down, right? Because every, we're not just, we're a global entity now. Right? We're so interconnected that that was one of the lessons right, about the pandemic. But also, too, you know, some people loved the pandemic, meaning that like, they're very secure in the choices they had made in terms of their employment. Maybe they could work from home. Maybe they were secure in their homes. Maybe they were comfortable in their, in their living arrangements. Right? Capricorn is, a, is opposed to cancer. Right? And after the pandemic, People made massive shifts. They did not go back to their jobs that were kind of grinds, that were just about the wage in soul-sucking enterprises, right? And so they wanted to be more creatively fulfilled. 2021, we have Jupiter, the great benefic, conjuncting Saturn at zero degrees of Aquarius. 2021 was really, I think that actually happened in 2020, December 2020, but just about 2021. Anyways, 2021 is the change. Okay, we, we now have seen what we've been living with and working with. And where would we like our future vision to go? How do we see kind of the best of what came out of the pandemic? And how do we go forward with that, right? How do we look at healthcare? How do we look at our systems? Can, is there a need for reform? Well, absolutely there is. But, you know, those were the first seeds of the conjunction, right? Just like a new moon. Twenty. 2022 Saturn squaring Uranus so then we have Saturn in an air sign right from 2021 uh, until 2024 no no 2023 excuse me two and a half years Saturn stays in a sign so that was Saturn in air squaring Uranus in earth so we've been in this kind of earth and water paradigm for a really long time and the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius marked the change into air. Why do I say this? Because Libra is an air sign. So really what happens in between, you know, these two goalposts is the kind of battle right now. And it really has been since 2021, right? And how are you articulating your thoughts and how are you kind of putting forth your vision? Saturn squaring Uranus, well, Uranus is saying in, in Earth, if you don't make the change that you that Saturn knows you need to make, we can make it from the outside, right? We can do it, we can we can we can blow some shit up if we have to, right? And so where do you need to become more independent? That was all of 2022. It was a first kind of real beginning of the sprout of the change to air. 2023 the nodes switch into the axis of Aries and Libra. Again, fire and air. So if you've been if you've been navigating all of the changes in your life from 2020 until 2023, then you probably have some, some well, it, it's hard to say really, because you could have planets in fire and air and not really be good at those karmic lessons, right? Or you could, or maybe you had made good choices there, or maybe you had learned those lessons there and so any, any kind of kerfluffle didn't really kind of leave you racked, right? 2024. Now we have the Jupiter and Saturn square. This is the first square of this new Jupiter and Saturn realization of the life that we're going to be living, which is going to be Aquarius, right? Which is where Pluto is going back to, right? He's about to turn direct on October 11th and he's going back to air. Why do I say this? Because now, with 2024, with the Jupiter and Saturn square, their first square was on August 20th. So if I'd asked this person, how's it looking? And they've been talking about these strikes for a couple of years, talking to different ports, seeing what's happening in different cities. The writing has been on the wall, right? So from August 20th until this point, Right? That was Leo, Leo, Virgo, Libra. 
So now that from Leo, the first August 20th, um, to Libra, that's a sextile. It's an opportunity to make change, right? But you have to seize the moment and they're on strike. They are seizing the moment, okay? And so this is the kind of first real reckoning of power, of personal power against the kind of forces that be, right? So the, the this ILA strike, whether you're from the U.S. or not, it, it concerns us all because we all receive our 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 are everything from everywhere. And when those ports slow down or stop, it takes a while. I mean, it can take, it will definitely affect our, our Christmases, our holiday seasons, right? And that is starting now. It's happening now. So, I'm sorry, I digress. I'm very excited. So from this, let's just look at it from this perspective of the people who are striking, right? So Libra, is fairness what they're wanting is equality right and so but they see themselves as kind of maybe the the david against the goliath but what the goliath doesn't realize that its time has come right there is a reckoning here and so the power really is with the people particularly because this strike is happening in libra which is from the u.s perspective uh, the 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams, right? Of, of collective bargaining, right? And that that's really what we, we need to see each other kind of not as me versus you, but as we're in this together, right? But that actually trines for the US, our Aquarius moon, moon being the people. So from that standpoint, just looking at air, that's a beneficial omen for the people who are striking. Right now, from the benefit of the corporations of, of Capricorn, right, of, as of the powers that be, of the status quo, of the real wealth, right, of the power here. Well, they just got a letter from Joe Biden, which you know you can dicker about what that means or not, but they have the support of a progressive, progressive government uh, with the workers, right? That's already the kind of shift of Pluto moving towards Aquarius, but it's also kind of the forerunner of honoring the will of the people which is aquarius which is the moon in aquarius and the you in the sibley birth chart of the us so there's a, a trine of air there right and so when we think about when we think about what would be coming up for this strike yes it it, it it's almost like the it seems like a pr game is happening right now where they're really trying to get ahead of the backlash because once things start to get tight the people will turn to the people who are the people who are striking to kind of try to conform them to change, right? The ruler of this eclipse is in Scorpio, right? And so Scorpio can be, well, if I don't have it, why should you have it, right? Or if I'm in the well and I can't get what I need, well, then you're not going to have it either, right? But Venus is moving very quickly. As of today, when I'm recording this, she's already at uh, da, 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 nine degrees of Scorpio, right? She's about to come into a trine. I apologize, I'll get there. Venus is going to trine Saturn, right? Um, on October 4th. So that will be the first real test. So from the perspective of the, of the strikers, right? When Venus in the, this is, Venus is in the U.S. 12th house, right? So the house of um, unseen enemies, unseen forces moving behind the scenes. Well, that Venus is going to trine uh, Pisces, Saturn and Pisces, right? Which is the, the home and family. It's the foundation of the U.S. chart. It's the goodwill. Right. Um, so uh, there could be some kind of an, uh, of an easy flow of, you know, this might be an interesting thing for Kamala, you know, being the Venus in Scorpio to make that kind of pledge to support the stability, not just of the of the workers in the U.S., and, and, but also to kind of project that out to the Jupiter. Right. Jupiter in the seventh house of we're going to kind of make sure that. Uh, our end of the bargain, you know, stays kind of optimistic and, and expansive, right? And so then Saturn, uh, excuse me, then Venus is going to trine uh, Mars in Cancer 
on the 8th, okay? And this is this will be at like 14, 15 degrees. So this ongoing trying to, to Saturn will remain. So from the viewpoint of the workers, people, Libra, looking for a fair deal, Venus, the ruler of this eclipse, is in the second house of earned income. But it's also the it's what you get that you don't deserve. That's what's that's what that's what Scorpio can be, right? But so you know, Scorpio is in a sextile to Capricorn. So for so long, kind of the foundational elements of corporate America have received the sextile from Scorpio money that you didn't necessarily earn, but you still get to the corporations. But now this Venus, to my mind, because this is a south node eclipse, it is a letting go of past ways of being. I think that the pressure is really going to be on the corporate entities to kind of not rely on stalling tactics. That this isn't going to be something where the more they dig their heels in, the more they can kind of wait out the little guy and squeeze that's not going to happen because from the perspective that the strike started in Libra and the ruler of the strike is in the second house of earned income, all those workers want to work. They want their jobs. They're not asking for a handout. They're asking for equity, for equality, right? And so because she is in the modern day rulership of Pluto, she's in Scorpio, she's going to be whispering behind the scenes into the ears of the CEO saying, no, 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 this power dynamic has to change. This, this making money hand over fist on the backs of the workers, this is going to change. So if, if I were uh, advising the strikers, I would see Pluto turning direct on October 11th as absolutely don't do anything until then, right? Libra is about how we communicate with each other and very often we don't say the things that we mean, right? And a lot of kind of, a lot of the words that come out of our mouth, they're subterfuge to kind of distract from what the bottom line and the real issue and the real hurt is. We're all in this kind of reckoning right now with Saturn being in Pisces of like, this is the bottom line of the pain that I've experienced in my familial situations, cancer, but with one-on-one -on -one relationships, right? Scorpio, where I, I got the shit end of the stick or I kept my mouth shut and I gave myself the shit end of the stick. No more. That has to end now. This is where we make the change in who we are and how we show up in relationship, period, right? Because if we don't do that now, as the nodal axis shifts, we're going to head into the, the North Node being into the kind of primordial chaos that Saturn is trying to show us, right? This kind of look at your patterning. Can you see how everybody's saying the same thing, but no, but the words are different. Can you see how with uh, Jupiter and Gemini about to retrograde, right? Jupiter is going to turn retrograde on October 9th which means that all of the kind of blessings that we've been enjoying in Gemini, which is to say that, you know, Gemini is about, yes, of course it's facts, but it's like, here's my idea, here's your idea, here's this idea, there's that idea, and it seems like an endless amount of knowledge. It can seem like you can read every book in the library and still not have the answer. But the answer in Jupiter, really, the wisdom comes from understanding that, more isn't always better, right? That sometimes if you just take an idea and you take another idea that you have and you reconfigure it, it creates a third solution. It creates the mutable change, right? We can't get out of the fixedness, but we can we can think outside the box for different ways of, of each getting what we want, okay? And if we can't do that with Saturn and Pisces, now, in our emotional bodies, in our emotional landscapes, the next year could be really, really chaotic for people. People who have heavy earth and heavy water, if they are kind of jumping up and down screaming right now and kicking every hive that they can find, well, uh, these changes don't bode very well for them. And I'm going to talk about that now. 
this trine is going to carry us this uh, Venus and Mars and uh, Saturn trine in the water signs, right? They really meant for us to tap into the kind of emotionality that means I have these fears. You have these fears. I understand that I don't Sometimes I get what I deserve and sometimes I don't, right? But there really is no such thing as fairness. There's only fair, there's only kind of improvement to my own way of being, right? And that I have to kind of learn to forgive myself for the mistakes that I made because I thought I needed to be that. And then as I grew in my consciousness and evolution, I, I learned to kind of to see the flaws in others and to kind of choose my level of participation or to see the reflected flaw in myself, that there's always a little bit of kind of, there's always a flaw in the pearl, right? That, that no matter how good you see yourself, there's always some truth to that kind of bitter lining, right? There's always, no, no person, relationships are 50 50 right there's no 49 51 but there is always a little bit of kind of 49 49 meaning that there's one percent of each one of us that we don't perceive as sucking as bad as it does let's just put it like that right and if you can kind of get better acquainted with the notion of whatever is being kicked up in your life is meant to show you something to help you heal and feel more compassionate towards yourself Pisces, yourself, right? And that there's, you know, sometimes, particularly, I think, with the fixed signs, because they have a natural inclination towards drama, but we all have fixed energy in us, right? And certainly, the kind of Mercury retrograde in Leo of this summer probably was showing you where your fixedness was, or where you had taken on too much responsibility, or where you had taken on too much glory for your wonderful achievements that really necessarily weren't just yours, or maybe your pridefulness, or maybe where you weren't kind of uh, bending to another person, or making or serving the dynamic, right? Because Leo feeds into Virgo, where we're in service to each other. We're in service to ourselves, right? Every good every good Virgo knows that the more I do for others, the more I heal myself. So, this trine is going to take us through the week, and then this weekend, Mars steps in to shadow. Mars is going to retrograde at the end of the year. He's going to retrograde on December 6th but he's already in, gonna be in his shadow by the end of this week. With Jupiter turning retrograde, the blessings will be internal, meaning that our, it, we, have to we have to kind of rely on our own internal pools of wisdom and knowledge and just common sense about other people and maybe not take them at their word or maybe uh, do the research to not just take the promise, right? Pluto turns direct on October 11th. So we're going to be steamrolling headlong towards Aquarius into the future and then into air. Any kind of shadow work mm -hmm. that needs to be done about how you feel about the structures in your life and the safety that they provide for you and your family or where you need to make changes, where you need to see your ancestral patterns of, well, we don't say that here, or... Um, we don't we don't do those things or we're not those people right well maybe it's time to kind of address the hurts that accrue by being those people right oh boy pluto's at 29 degrees he's not fooling around anymore when we think about the rest of this year october 9th uh, pluto goes retrograde october 11th pluto turns direct then we get into uh december where am i november where are we for saturn 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 where are you saturn come on man don't hide from me i think saturn goes direct on november 8th all right no that's not right uranus is moving into gemini on uranus moves so Uranus moves into Gemini on July 7th, 
2025. That's from fixed earth into air, okay? On November 8th, uh, 2025, he's going to retrograde back into Taurus. I only say that because if I could just find it here, Saturn is going to um, turn um, direct. I think it's on November 15th. But that notion that Saturn is turning direct in the mutable Pisces, mutable water, right? Nearly on the same um, day, one year later, that, a, that Uranus is going to go back into Taurus. If we can see what's happening, uh, I suppose what has happened in Taurus as kind of the readdressing of our comfort zones. Right, uh, uh, with Saturn squaring Jupiter this year, the first one was October and twentieth. Right, the second one will be December twenty fourth. So we have uh, Saturn turning direct in November, and then just a mere month later, December twenty fourth is going to be the second Jupiter and Saturn square. Okay, so there is a new future on offer, but Saturn saying. Do the healing work that's going to allow the quickness of when Saturn moves into, into fire, right? Saturn's going into Aries. He's going into fire. Fire and air are complementary signs. They work really to get well together. Think about how the, the wind spreads the fire. Think about a forest fire, right? From a small spark, it catches fire, and then it just takes off. And we don't necessarily need to think about it as destruction, but we can also think about it as kind of catching fire, like things being viral, ideas being viral, intuition being viral, kind of initiative, people be kind of in action being viral, right? So that's the second square, December 24th. The third square is going to be at uh, June 15th, 2025, at one degree of Cancer. So now, where is Mars? Mars is in Cancer. He's only at, what, uh, 11 degrees? Let me double check where he is today. Mars is at, oh, excuse me, he's at, where are you, Mars? Oh, he's at 15 degrees, okay? So he's just at the turning point of um, I knew what I was, I don't know what I'm doing in Cancer. That's zero to 15 degrees, right? And then 15 to 30 degrees is, all right, I got my sea legs. Remember I talked about how kind of Mars and Cancer is kind of like running in the water, right? Or like punching in the water. Like you're going to feel the blow before you receive the blow, right? Well, now he's at 15 degrees, but he's going to retrograde. He's going to finish and go all the way into Leo just the very beginning of Leo, and then he's going to retrograde, right? So whatever you're dealing with now, whatever the inflammation is, whatever, remember, cancer is a water sign. So water can be either like babbling brooks that never shut up because they need the white noise to fill the air, or because they need the reassurance, the kind of the noise, the familial noise, right? Or they can be mute. So if people aren't maybe saying what they need to say, or maybe aren't kind of articulating what they need, it doesn't mean it's not happening. It doesn't mean it's not percolating within them, right? Um, or within you, right? So uh, when we think about Mars retrograding, so we're going into the beginning of the year with Mars and retrograde. So that it's like we're going to speed up to to almost like a gridlock of, of frustration with Mars being retrograde. And this doesn't, this hasn't happened in quite some time. And so Mars is the, when you think about the order of the planets, it goes, you know, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and then Saturn. We call Jupiter and Saturn the transpersonal planets, meaning that they affect us all individually, but they also f affect the collective. They're not like the outer planets where they're, their influence is much more difficult and you need a greater span of time to really see the ramifications. Well, Mars is the last personal planet 
that um, before you get to the transpersonal, to the interpersonal and the transpersonal, meaning that because he is further away from the sun, he retrogrades, retrogrades the least frequently of the of the news of the personal planets. So whenever Mars retrogrades, it's a big deal. For the U.S., the Mars is retrograding in our eighth house where we have also have our sun and we also have Venus and Jupiter. So from the U.S. perspective or from the pre perspective of the people going back to the strike, right? The retrograde will just be kind of the implementation and working out the bugs and the changes of whatever kind of uh, results the strike will yield now. Right. And so although the, the, the first, you know, let's say this is a protracted strike, right? Well, the pain will already will have been felt because it's pre the kind of holiday season. Right. So uh, if you're thinking about kind of really upending the kind of political and um, Capricornian uh, status quo perspective, it's really going to be when Mars retrogrades. That's really when the kind of the the shit will hit the fan of these last kind of Pluto through the through the last degree of Capricorn, because Pluto does not. Um, where is Pluto? Why did Pluto go into Aquarius? Did I write that down? I didn't write it down. Sorry, I apologize. But when we come to 2025, we have Neptune moving into Aries on March 30th. We have uh, Saturn moving into Aries on May 24th. And then we have Uranus moving into Gemini on July 7th. So whatever the turmoil of the Mars retrograde, which you, you may or may not be conscious of now, but it will be beginning this weekend the kind of work of this moment with this final eclipse is one let go let God, right it's an eclipse it it's fate they have fated things to happen in it there's it's not it's like a tower moment there's nothing you can do to prevent it right there's nothing you can do to kind of forestall it maybe you've kicked the can down the road enough times and now here it is the full moon in aries in the next two weeks will be out of the sh out of the zone of the eclipses right so we'll be kind of our whole new reconstituted self a, a, a new understanding of ourselves the nodes will still be in aries and libra meaning that we'll still be dealing with people who kind of are meant to come in in these portals are meant to affect us in our way of thinking but we won't be so kind of thrashed about by the tempest okay but 2025 is about stepping into fire with Neptune and Saturn both going into Aries, really owning our own personal power, fully kind of not going back or reverting to past ways of being. And that's going to be a tricky issue, to be truthful, because Saturn is exalted in Libra, right? And he's not going to be done in Pisces uh, until, uh, what? What did I say? May, right? So that kind of emotional kind of reeling back in of that old status quo, those old patterns, that temptation, that temptation will be there. Happily, on November 15th, when he goes direct, we become more empowered within ourselves to make moves outside of ourselves. Okay? But air and fire are really kind of paradigm shifting energy right and so if you see a person who is struggling right now because we are in libra use the air perspective to say is that for me to get involved in right or is that possibly the person seeing the kind of convex mirror that's being showed to them and and is that kind of that leonine reactivity remember leo is a sextile to libra Okay, is this information now providing an opportunity for that person to see their fixedness and to make changes, right? When people are reactive, when they're when they clap back on you, it, it's a defense mechanism, 
right? We all have them. But when you can see it for the other person, you have a better chance of seeing it in yourself. And hopefully, like I did with my friend where I was kind of showing her a pattern of self-preservation that meant not saying the words, she didn't clap back. You know, she read it three times and said, I feel like you just cracked my head open. Maybe it is an issue with this eclipse of divine timing, right? With Pisces being, excuse me, with Saturn being in Pisces, that's the eight of cups in the tarot, meaning that like you've come to the infinity sign of a way of feeling, right? You do these feelings, you know this feeling, but there's still another cup, which is the ninth cup, which is when you feel satisfied and, and content within yourself. And you have to leave your past patterning behind Saturn and Pisces to go forward to that next cup, right? Because in the ninth cup, with the ninth cup, then you you only need one more cup to have the 10 of cups, which is everything you can emotionally have. When, and then you have to start over again, right? And so, when we're talking about Saturn and Pisces, we're looking at seeing our infinity mm. patterns. This is what I've done every single time, and this is the mm. kind of payoff that I've gotten. That's why I brought up the nodal axis points of 2023, 2007-19, 2007-2005, uh, 1989, right? These are, well, really 87 when those nodes would have first switched. These are kind of epochs. These are 20 meter increments that we're talking about. And so can you see yourself in those patterns of who you were as an individual and who you were in partnership? Maybe how you kind of repressed yourself, uh, Saturn being exalted in Libra, right? And how you kind of need to learn how to speak your truth now. Or did you not pick your level of participation and now you're doing that more judiciously? Okay, these are the bigger themes that are playing out for all of us right now. The more you know your chart and your patterns, the better equipped you are to deal, basically. Um, so that was all I wanted to talk about today. The sat... No, I won't even get into that. I won't even get into the Saturn Neptune conjunction. But let me say this. I was thinking about this. How do I approach this Libra, this final Libra eclipse? And I was led to the rewatch the movie Wings of Desire, the Vim Vender movie. If you don't know it, it's on HBO Max right now. Go watch it. It's wonderful. But what if we, now that the eclipse axis is starting to move into Pisces, what if we actually considered ourselves as being like angels incarnate, right? Because Pisces is about before we incarnate and what we, what we want to achieve in this life, Aries, right? Our spark of intuition that we come in with. We're wrapping up the North Node in Aries. What has been shown to you that you want to pursue in and of yourself, right? Where does your fire lead you? And so if we are these angels who choose, I want to take the plunge to feel myself being a, a person in a moment in time and experiencing all that time has to offer, both the good and the bad, right? Because the angels, they are watchers. That's what, you know, the seraphim, they're meant to watch. The choirs and angels, they are they are meant to observe and and. and and some will be the martyr, right? The word martyr comes from Mars, the witness, yes, but also too, to feel the pain and not be able to do anything. That's what a witness, all they can do is to testify, right? Again, more Libra themes of testifying and speaking up in fairness, right? Well, in Wings of Desire, this angel wants to incarnate because he's, he's fallen in love with someone who kind of he watched for so long and he just wants a chance to connect. Can we see ourselves as angels incarnate looking for the chance to connect? And every time we've made mistakes in our connections, did we learn from those mistakes? Can we witness our own patterns? 
can we kind of be more forthright in ourselves, Aries, so that the next time we connect, we have, I, I suppose, a better chance of connection, a better chance of getting less of what we don't want and more of what we do. And more to the point, do we really know what we want? This is an incredibly important question to ask yourself right now, because if you don't know what you want, the universe is just going to continue to give you more of what you don't want so that you get the contrast. This is what uh, uh, Abraham Hicks talks about as contrast. I definitely don't want that, right? Well, if you don't want that, then really what do you want and where are you willing to do the work of it, right? Because in Libra, it's the house of partnership and that is the primary domain of work, right? We take from the seventh house when the sun sets in the seventh house, it takes you into the sixth house, which is the work that you do every single day, right? It's the grind. It's the house of that the ancients called the house of slavery, right? Or it's the house of pets. You can think about it like that. Are you someone's pet, right? Or do your pets run your show? I know my pets run my show to a certain extent. And so it, they've been a good perspective for me to see how much I give my time away and how I really need to learn to prioritize myself and my own needs in time. We are human beings. If Nikola Tesla, Nikola Tesla thought that the, the earth was a conductor of acoustic resonance, right? Acoustic, the sound that resonates, that we bounce off of each other. Well, that's all the earth is, and we're just kind of reverberating off of each other. When these planets make their shift into air and to fire, particularly when Pluto makes his final shift into Aquarius, we are gonna find ourselves in a new vibratory reality that we really need to kind of get acquainted with right now, right? Because even when you stifle your own thoughts and your own truth and your own knowing, that still has a resonance within your body and you are still reverberating that hurt, that repression, okay? Please don't misunderstand. We think about ourselves as being so solid and being so... You know, most people can't fathom or they're terrified to think of their own death, right? And so they just... They force that into the shadow. Well, with this kind of visiting of Pluto through Capricorn, we've all been kind of uh, receiving a masterclass in other people's shadow. And so if we saw what we didn't like about them, can we see it enough about ourselves to make the changes? This Libra eclipse is giving us a real kind of six month interlude to step into the future that is Aquarius and the Libra does trine Aquarius. So the direction that you're wanting to go to is the right one. It is the path. It's just, can you say the words that you need to hear from someone else, right? I just saw that video that I hadn't seen of um, Paul Mescal and uh, her name is escaping me and the hot priest from Fleabag in the confessional and they sing baby can I hold you tonight the Tracy Chapman song where they don't they can't say the words that the other one needs to say they can't own their own behaviors they needed an intermediary think about what Libra is sometimes it is a kind of intermediary where Saturn right, is the kind of judge. Sometimes you need the outside perspective. You need a counselor, right? You need a safe place, Libra, truce, so you can kind of say the words out loud, right? And there's no, there's no shame in that. There's no, there's been just way too much shame, right? Whatever you need to get you to the place where you can articulate something more of yourself, do it, right? Seize the moment. Because if you don't, the eclipses will do it for you, for sure, okay? I hope this has been help helpful. I feel like it's been a little all over the place. I think that because Venus is conjuncting the eclipse, everyone's truth is a very personal truth right now. And please be aware if they're not speaking it with their words, they're speaking it with their action, okay? And you might be doing the same. And so all that is, is a kind of, it's being squared by, 
by Mars and Saturn. Do you feel safe enough to say the words that you need to say? Can you keep yourself safe? Primarily, of course, priority number one, right? We're talking about root chakra issues here. But if you're, if you're beyond kind of personal safety in your home, in your family, if you have enough to eat, right? If you, if you feel secure with who you are in your fundamental needs, then you are always working towards self-actualization. And that rarely stops. The goalposts are here in between these two fixtures, right? And also too, do you have the courage to say the words or are you just filling the space with noise? Something to think about. Again, I'm Jennifer Swales from Honeybee Astrology. Um, please like, share, subscribe if you'd like a personal reading with me. Uh, it's not as punitive as it might sound. It's really just a conversation because I'm just as interested in you as you might be in me or my perspective. And thank you for spending this time with me. It really means so much to me. I can't tell you. I'm going to go through the signs now to talk about what is this Libra eclipse for your, again, from the perspective of your rising sign that sets the houses but if you're talking about your sun it's it, that's going to talk to more of the kind of repeating theme of your life okay if you are an aries if you're an aries then this a uh, libra seventh house uh south node eclipses you've been going through this since 2023 where you be maybe holding your tongue and not saying anything, or maybe going into that Scorpio house of reactivity and kind of reacting and blaming and again and getting all worked up. Don't forget Scorpio is ruled by Mars, with Mars being in Cancer at your house, home of foundation, right? Maybe um, there's you're in a T-square right now between the uh, yourself and your partnership in your home and family, but then also too with Pluto uh, just about to turn direct um, your career and the work that you do in the world. Okay. And so remember, time is on your side here. Think about the metaphor that I, I, I gave for the striking ILA, right? That um, if you can kind of, if you know where the corruption in this kind of work and home dynamic is, can't, if you see how you've kind of been maybe selling yourself and your partnership short at the expense of work and home, right? If you know where the changes need to be made, then you're bringing them into the future. Then you're going to probably have a better time with this eclipse. If you've been kind of burying your head in the sand with Saturn being in the 12th house and thinking that things are coming out of nowhere and, and you're in the house of, of hidden enemies and everyone's a hidden enemy, well, then you're really kind of disempowering yourself, right? Whatever anyone is showing you right now, think about it. It's either a, it's either kind of um, the difference between the mirror and the picture version or it's kind of the your internal landscape being shown to you through a funhouse mirror, right? It's time for you to take back your power by kind of taking control of your mind. And with jet, with um, Mercury being in Libra, don't just focus on what the other person is saying, focus on what you are saying or not saying. That might be the key to this eclipse. Taurus, if you are a Taurus, then this Libra eclipse is happening for you in your sixth house. The sixth house is the house of the work that we do every day in the world. This is the house of chronic conditions. This is the house of illness, right? This is the house of pets, meaning these are thing, things and places and scenarios that we usually care for other people, um, or maybe we are the underling that does the care for other people, right? The grind that you have to kind of, you have to serve to get through your daily existence. So because you are Taurus, a, a, Lib a Venus ruled sign, and because Venus is in Scorpio right now in your seventh house of partnership, um, you might be getting kind of a blast, uh, maybe from women or maybe in terms of money in the changes that you need to fundamentally make in your understanding of how you show up on a daily basis in partnership, okay? And so this is a gorgeous opportunity for you, Taurus, to take back a little control of yourself, 
right? This is Taurians and Scorpions, they really, this is the axis of, of, of the struggle of control, of feeling so powerless about what happens from to you from the outside. But when you see yourself as being in partnership with everyone in the world on a daily basis in Libra, and that it's your responsibility to make sure it's fair for you, or that maybe you need to change your thinking about what fair means, right? Or maybe you need to change your kind of Venusian tactics about how you're using your language. Um, that could be part of it, of the equation too. But with uh, Pluto now, oh, excuse me, did you hear my stomach? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> with Pluto being in your ninth house, um, there should be some faith there in the structures that support your life, right? That you, you do have resources there, there, or at the very least, you have a, a sense of yourself and your own higher mind, right? How the work that you consistently apply yourself in that uh, the ways that you are able to kind of sacrifice for the greater good will always serve you in partnership, right? And that you don't need to feel so much at the mercy of the winds of fate, okay? Think about it like that. Uh, eclipses uh, since 2023, going through the 12th house of Aries and the 6th house of a Libra cannot have been easy because these houses are a version they're held in aversion. You don't, you can't perceive who you are as a, as a person every day, right? You can't see yourself um, or the mighty I am, or maybe you've been discouraged, right? Or maybe you kind of don't allow yourself enough downtime or enough quiet time to get in touch with your kind of spark of intuition and being. Um, one can be the loneliest number for Taurus, right? But two could be as bad as one. It's the loneliest number since the number one. And so with eclipses having gone through there, you've really been forced to reckon with your ability to be alone, right? And to feel a little, going back to wings of desire, it's all right to feel, um, to be alone and to feel lonely. It's really when you feel lonesome, it's that you, you know what would be wholesome, what would make you feel whole. Hopefully with this axis moving through this 12th and 6th house, you now know what you need in partnership to feel more whole within yourself and how you can bring those changes to yourself right now. I hope this helps. Gemini, if you are a Gemini, then this Libra eclipse is happening to you in your fifth house. So this is the fifth house of, this is the joy of Venus, right? And so, you know, uh, this can be being in a relationship that you've been in for a long time because it has been the status quo or maybe it looks beautiful from the outside or it's what everyone else thinks that you should have and what you deserve, but maybe it's been lacking. Right? Or maybe this kind of past patterning between your parents has conditioned you to think that, well, this is how women are and this is how men are, right? And it's really stifling your own creative self-expression. With Jupiter being in your sign about to go retrograde, you're not going to be so much kind of inundated with outside kind of blessings or flattery, right? Or, or niceties. And how can you still conjure up those lovely pearls of wisdom that that get overlooked very often with Gemini's. Gemini is seen as so light and fluffy and and not terribly serious and, and not committal, right? That it can it can be kind of misunderstood as being the kind of innovative outside the box thinker and problem solver, right? Partnership is where you can creatively self-express, right? But it really has to be kind of, the battle is really right now for sure within you, with Venus being in your sixth house every day, kind of maybe churning up the, the unhappiness that partnership has presented to you and how your kind of self-worth and value has taken a hit from that, right? Or, it's an eclipse, which means that whatever is happening in that fifth house, whatever kind of, maybe it's an issue with your children, or maybe you need to be more childlike in your self-expression. Libra can be very staid, right? It can be very kind of reserved. 
um, it can be very based on kind of the, the words and not so much the spirit of the meaning of the word, right? So, tap, oh my god, my stomach again, I apologize. Tap into that kind of the truth that uh, the, the Venus Cassini hopefully gave you about yourself, right? Where am I feeling empowered to speak my truth? And maybe where am I not? And is that really the, the, the environment, the set of circumstances I want to continue within, right? This, uh, the Pisces eclipse would have given you a kind of just an inkling, a taste of the chaos that could happen to you at the top of your chart in, in, your, in your work, right? In your kind of, excuse me, regard of the world, right? That's what the 10th house is. And maybe it's okay with this eclipse to just say, you know what, I'm going to let go and let God and fuck it. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't want that anymore. And if that legacy of esteem is making me so fundamentally unhappy in my partnerships or, or making me feel repressed in my creative self-expression, well, then that legacy is not really worth continuing to build upon. I hope that this helps. Cancer. If you are a Cancer, then this Libra eclipse is happening for you at the at the the bottom of your chart, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, right? And so this can be uh, all of the things I said about the white noise that Cancers can create, or the silence, right? And this really can kind of with with Saturn being in Pisces in your house of the higher mind, really what this says to me is, are you dreaming big enough or are you afraid to say the words that will kind of be the spell that creates the reality that you want? Venus is in your fifth house right now, Scorpio. And so, you know, I talked before about that tendencies that cancers can have of, of slipping into kind of cynicism or kind of backbiting or to, to marginalize another person because it makes you feel better about where you're at, right? But, you know, with this foundation, if you can see the patterns, I brought, I said those personal stories because they're patterns of behaviors that people are just seeing, waking up to. And if this eclipse can show you something about your own patterns of behavior, particularly those that you inherited from your family of being, of your family of birth, right? You have a better chance of addressing them. The fourth house is called the kind of graveyard in the sense that it is the Alpha and the Omega. It's the beginning. It's from where we come from, but it's also how we finish our lives. And that can be really terrifying to think that the patterns and the ways of being that have kept us safe, that have kept us kind of, you know, cancer is a water sign. So you're always growing something, whether it's a feeling or if it's actualized through your work that you do in the world or your seventh house of partnership, you're kind of concretizing, right? With Pluto now back in your seventh house, you're either concretizing um, things that needed to go or you're kind of watering seeds of new intention of what you'd like to manifest that you may or may not feel like you deserve. Pluto moving into Aquarius, you're going to have 20 years of, of figuring out whether or not you deserve it, right? <laughs> or whether or not um, you got it by ill-begotten gains. You'll, you'll, you'll definitely get there in that karmic house sooner rather than later. But right now, it's the first kind of opportunity for you to examine your past patterns of being with your family, in relationships, and how has that, I suppose, empowered you to be able to speak your truth of who you are now. Not as a member of your family of origin, but as a person who's just a kind of incarnate angel hoping to kind of just connect in time and space with another. I hope that this helps you. Leo, if you are a Leo, then this uh, Libra house, uh, excuse me, Libra eclipse is happening for you in your third house. So this is the house of siblings, cousins, neighbors. This is the people that we meet in our neighborhood. This is just the ritual of what we do every day, meaning that like I get up, I have my coffee, I take a shower, right? How have, how have your kind of past patterns 
of relationships taught you to accumulate these people um, who may or may not have been your earliest competition, right? Um, have you kind of th thrived on competition um, in your environment? And do you need that kind of reactivity from other people, right? These are good questions for you, Leo, because you can't really dull your shine as a Leo, but you can certainly know quite a lot more about how it affects other people and how you're getting truthfulness from them or not, or how, I suppose, liberally you are kind of shining the truth of who you are with them or not, right? The third house is called the joy of the moon because, uh, you know, we can get into patterns of kind of putting on a false self, right? A mask that's uh, Libra, right? Uh, Saturn is exalted in Libra, right? So we can put on our best face, but also too, it's not our true face. It's not our true expression. And, and it can be very difficult to kind of see how that person seems to have achieved. And that person is not you. It's not your person. You have so much more to shine that's true about you. You know so much more about yourselves then you're actually probably engaging with these people on a daily basis, right? And so now it's time to, to, to see those, those ways of kind of maybe subjugating yourself uh, just to get through your daily existence, right? Or not, or how others have done that for you. And it, it, it may or may not be a time of reckoning, but you're ready for it. It's a sextile. So it's an opportunity if you can kind of be more attuned to the Leo um, square, right? With with Venus, right? Maybe uh, women in your world, maybe money issues in your world, particularly in terms of your home and family and foundation, they could be cluing you more into those past patterns now that will help you kind of adjust it make the changes on a daily basis make them now this is the house of the moon the joy of the moon do it now make up your mind now decide once you decide everything else falls in place once you articulate the words and say them out loud everything will line up just be careful what you wish for here leo okay you do have pluto moving into your seventh house of partnership and so the more kind of owning you are of your fire the more empowered you will be to move into the future. Take care. Virgo. If you are a Virgo, then this Libra eclipse is help happening to you in your second house of earned income. Self-worth and value, right? The second house speaks to the conditions that you were born into and how those have changed and also how you have kind of initiated changes to them based on your own understanding and improved um, understanding of your self-worth and value right? So uh, for Virgos right now, this is important to kind of initiate change because the nodal axis is shifting. And so when the south node moves into Virgo, you want to kind of be able to, to release patterns of, of possibly self-sacrifice or um, uh, subjugating yourself to the work that you do in the world or their partnership that you have that you have in the world right this this isn't um, I suppose as um, daunting for for Virgos being a mutable sign but the south node is going to be moving through your first house so any changes that you've been making to to your money to your work they're going to become very personal very soon Okay, and so um, you want to kind of wrap this uh, transit of the second house, eighth house axis and how much you kind of, how the money that you make in the work, from the work that you do in the world has bolstered yourself of, uh, of self-esteem, but also to maybe how you haven't necessarily advocated for yourself when things have been unfair in partnerships or maybe when you haven't gotten what you deserved and how can you change that paradigm how can you initiate those changes those second eighth house axis changes now before the nodal axis shifts and and be until you really cede control okay um saturn 
all of the kind of Neptune Saturn changes coming into Air Aries in your eighth house, those are massive changes in kind of what you receive from other people that you may or may not deserve, but also to how other people um, bring their blessings or their kind of Saturnine perspective and how do you how secure are you in your faith in and of yourself second eighth house is always still about yourself in the kind of paradigm of the first house who i am and the seventh house partnership with everybody else so if you can initiate those changes now before the nodal axis shifts you'll be in much better stead say the words that you need to say you can do it i have faith in you we, if if worth comes to worse, tap into some kind of scorpionic rage <laughs> that Venus is probably going to readily provide you with to, to really kind of laser focus what you need to be speaking about specifically. Good luck with it. Libra, if you're a Libra, then this is all about you, right? This is about Libras very often will um, go along to get along, right? And that and that might be a kind of coping mechanism of head in the sandness, right? Ostrich sy syndrome. Pisces is your sixth house, and so maybe it's kind of maybe you need to put more skin in the game, Libra, right? Maybe you need to start taking a more vested interest. This can be difficult for Libras because Virgo is your twelfth house, and so decision making or how to prioritize yourself it, it, it's that's your house of self undoing right it, it to prior prioritize yourself seems to be something that you don't even know how to start or where to go right how you live your life on a daily basis might seem to be kind of open to the elements with pisces being your sixth house but you know right now with with mercury being there in libra Kazemi, right? You, you, you've you never had a better opportunity to know yourself and maybe to see yourself and how you're speaking your truth or not. Are you able to say the words? This might be an opportunity for you to kind of access that kind of third par party person, right? To have, to have a kind of, to not so much be internalizing the messages of the kind of convex concave um, mirror photograph or a mirror funhouse mirror where are you in this paradigm right and do you have a person a friend that you deal with on a daily basis with venus being the ruler of this eclipse being in scorpio and the people that you deal with every day who will just shoot you straight right you know venus in in scorpio she's not gonna pull any punches right because she's trying she's doing her best and she's really frustrated and it's not it's not her milieu and so she's being kind of she's dealing with her own self-worth and value issues so if someone is projecting their bullshit onto you is can you find that kind of sliver of truth that you need without it kind of completely eroding your self-worth and value that's another awesome way to think about it, okay? So I hope that this helps you, Libra. This has been going on since 2023. So hopefully this will serve as a kind of a, of a release to freedom, right? Because it's in the lower degrees. This, is, it's, this eclipse is happening at 10 degrees, but also too, um, the nodal axis is at six degrees. And so we're really wrapping up to a place of feeling more free, feeling more empowered and insured within ourselves. Um, as the nodal axis goes down to the lower um, degrees of a sign, it's it's the beginning again. And this for sure as a south node eclipse is a beginning again, a letting go and a purging and a new start, a fresh way of being, a whole new you. Please embrace it. Take care. If you are a Scorpio, Scorpio, if you, if you are a Scorpio, this Libra eclipse is happening for you in your 12th house. This is the house of self undoing, which means as a Scorpio, um, perhaps you put too much stock in the words that other people say, 
right? Or the social niceties that they give you. Maybe you're happy with the silence. If you're going to jump up, jump up. I'm sorry, this is my dog. I apologize. I'm living in the sixth house every day with her. You know, maybe um, as a Scorpio, you kind of like the reactivity and getting the kind of negative or positive response. And so this Libra 12th house of self undoing can mean that you allow yourself to kind of be lulled by the calm or the silence that other people give you. But you're not getting off that easy anymore, Scorpio. <coughs> Excuse me. If you can allow yourself to go into the 12th house and to see maybe what people are showing you, maybe passively or maybe aggressively, right? But there is truth there. There is a kernel of truth. And so if you can allow for that to seep in, um, you will do yourself a grand service, right? Twelfth house, sixth house eclipses are not easy because they are your blind spot. But as a Scorpio, you know, you can be pretty fierce, right? Who are you in this equation? Are you the scorpion ready to sting? Or are you the kind of eagle getting the above perspective? Or are you the phoenix? I know every Scorpio loves to think about themselves. I swear to God, every Scorpio likes to think about themselves as being the phoenix coming out of the ashes. Ashes, But, you know, that might just be a nice fable that you've been telling yourself and that no one's bothering to correct you. Now is hopefully the time that the silence will be deafening for you and you'll be able to, to, to correct and self-correct. When the eclipse, when the nodal axis shifts into... Um, your fifth and eleventh house, you can really accrue huge um, gains, right? Uh, maybe this Pisces eclipse has kind of showed you the first kind of inklings of that, but um, definitely try to wrap this up, right? Silence is not golden in your case, Scorpio, not from you and not for others, and I hope that this helps you. Sagittarius, if you are a Sagittarius, excuse me just a minute, come up. Oh my god, Jump. If you are Sagittarius, <laughs> then this um, Libra eclipse is happening for you or in your 11th house. So go back to the preface of everything I talked about with the ILA, right? This could be, um, now bear in mind as a, as a Sagittarius that Venus is in your 12th house, right? So your need for money, your need for stability, your kind of feelings of everybody's always out to get me or I'll never get ahead and no one ever sees my self-worth and value that kind of well that is your kind of Achilles heel Scorpio right that that is the shadow if you've been able or possibly uh you know a Venus a Venusian person will be pointing this out for you right and so um can you see that right can you have the kind of calm and the peace it, it might seem like you're kind of taking all comers right now with with jupiter being in your seventh house but that's going to settle down on, on october 9th right and then the power will become way more internal on how you deal with everybody else in the world particularly partnership yes but also open enemies right gemini uh, excuse me, with seventh house being gemini the ruler of Gemini is in your 11th house, right? Do you have people you can turn to? Are there friends or groups or associations or mentors who could help you to navigate these choppy waters? We're coming into massive changes for you, Sagittarius, right? And so with Pluto now about to turn direct in your self-worth and value house of Capricorn, this eclipse is kicking off really the kind of culminating energy from when Pluto moved into Capricorn and that began in 2007. It was in earnest in 2008 where he stayed there, but in 2007, what was happening for you and what were the changes to your kind of self-worth and value and have you made strides in that area or have you become more a slave to the security that maybe that status has provi provided for you in this 15 year, 16 year interval? Go back to your patterns. Try to kind of re, if you're able to see how the blessings came in for you, 
in uh, 2005, how they came in for you in, well, 2007 to 2005, right? That was when the nodal axis shifted and you became more kind of yourself, right? More of an Aries. How did you embrace that creative self-expression? And, and how do you need to kind of revise that, but also reconnect to that individual spark of who you are, right? Not just the big picture thinking about who a Sagittarius is and what you should be in the loftier ambitions. Really the brass tacks of get off your pedestal, get into your body and get moving and think about how good that feels right now. I imagine for those ILA workers to be on the picket lines must be very invigorating because they're fighting not just for their creative self-expression or their children in the fifth house, they're also kind of defending the, the core, the foundation of their chart with Saturn being in Pisces, right? At the bottom of your chart, that is your home and foundation. So uh, let Saturn kind of show you your patterns of optimism or pessimism, right? Let that Venus in Scorpio show you something about how kind of that well is always kind of beckoning, but that is your self undoing. That really your, your, who you are as a Sagittarius is optimism. It, it is kind of jubilancy. And, you know, with Mars in your eighth house, how are you holding it back? How are you not sharing yourself with others as a, because you're, you're, you're continuing patterns of kind of uh, safety patterns that you might have learned uh, as, a, as a child, right? That's that kind of trying right now from Saturn in Pisces to Mars in, in Cancer in your eighth house, right? How maybe that kept you safe in the past, but you no longer need those patterns of being. It's all being illuminated for you right now, Sagittarius. I hope that this helps you. Capricorn. If you are a Capricorn, then this Libra eclipse is happening for you at the top of your chart. This is the 10th house. So this is, for a Capricorn, this is your legacy, right? And it's interesting that to me, uh, to my mind, that this whole Libra um, eclipse cycle really began for me. And if you can go back and look at it, and it was um, going to see the Nick Cave show. And Nick Cave is a, is a Capricorn ascendant, right? So this, if I'm talking to Nick Cave, this is the top of your chart, Nick Cave. And so, I know Nick Cave has Jupiter there in, in Libra, but um, where, where have you been kind of constrained by your feelings of what is fair in the world? Or maybe have you kind of silenced your voice at the expense of your kind of um, status quo or the legacy that you created in the world, right? Where do you need to shake things up? Pluto, you know, going direct on the 11th in your uh, first house, it, it, it you know, it's shit I'll get off the pot time for sure because he's going to go into your second house of self-worth and value and income, right? So, uh, you know, to feel it in the pocket, you might have gotten a taste of that in the springtime about the direction you needed to go to in the future and maybe where you have been holding on to these last vestiges of that kind of eminence front, right? It's a put on. You don't need it, right? Let it go, right? The North Node being in Aries at the foundation of your chart, Capricorn, is saying all you need is you, right? All you need is your kind of divine spark of being, right? the kind of like the angels incarnating in the wings of desire, right? All you need is that kind of inclination of desire, right? That that is your birthright. And although you might have kind of garnered a gorgeous landscape in your professional life, it's not truly you or feeding your soul, right? Heavy, heavy times for Capricorns for sure, but you're ready for it because you've had quite a long time to prepare for this moment, right? You know, and with Saturn being in Pisces for you um, in your third house, uh, possibly there is a kind of voice of reason in your everyday existence that's saying, mm, that, let's not get confused, that this is really the bottom line of who you are. Possibly there's a person there who's really been kind of the bottom line for you 
as a kind of angel on your shoulder. I would think about that. You know, you're definitely kind of, oh my God, my stomach is outrageous. Um, you're definitely kind of being divinely guiding or receiving the benefit of divine timing. Think about it like that. Whatever is happening and whatever change is, is happening to uh, your legacy, let it happen, right? Let it go. You don't need it anymore. You, you're safe. You know you can see, keep yourself safe. And any kind of trappings of eminence, they are keeping you trapped. Good luck with it. Aquarius. If you are an Aquarius, this is a very exciting time for you because this Libra uh, eclipse is happening uh, in your ninth house. So now the ninth house, particularly if you're an Aquarius sun, the ninth house is the joy of the sun, right? So this is where kind of the higher mind gets illuminated and sometimes to ourselves, for ourselves, right? And so uh, in, this, in this eclipse, with this eclipse, you might... I suppose, hear the words articulated, maybe from a person in power, maybe from a woman in power, with uh, Venus being in Scorpio, the top, top of your chart, or not. It could just be an internal knowing of a past pattern of behavior that you no longer need to survive, right? Or a past way of kind of looking at things as fundamentally being fair or unfair or maybe a way of not speaking your truth and staying silent in that ninth house right like little little pictures should be seen and not heard maybe that's a pattern that you you inherited from your family this is an eclipse so it's always inevitably about our families of origin right about our mother and father where where has that kind of uh, viewpoint that kind of mantra served you and maybe where has it not, right? Uh, right now for Aquariuses, it can be very daunting with Pluto finishing up in your 12th house, right? But um, Aquarius is a very future forward sign. So uh, maybe your Taurian foundation um, has become not just your comfort zone, it's become um, a safety zone or more of a kind of um, purgatory, right? Uh, your way of being and just receiving or kind of living by the, the, the maxims um, that kept you safe, they're no longer serving you. It's time for you to kind of look or reach for a broader perspective, right? Or maybe kind of open up your mind with you know, Mercury's in Libra, so there could be a person here who's illum who's illuminating different truths, and maybe it's time for you to kind of weigh them upon the scale of the of your heart, right? Do they lighten the load, or do they kind of increase the burden? Only you can know that, but there's really a new viewpoint, a new understanding of yourself and time and, and who you are and the, and the way of the world and how the world really needs you to step into that kind of uniqueness that is Aquarius, right? Aquarius is the star card in the Tarot, meaning that like you kind of need to appear naked in front of other people or be more comfortable as seeing yourself as a person who might as well be naked because your eccentricities are so different to them that they re you really shine a light on the places that make them feel vulnerable and there is so much strength as an Aquarius to step into your own uniqueness and your future vision. The world needs you now. You're, 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 this is kind of almost the last blast of you sitting on the sideline, Aquarius. I hope that you're ready for it. I think that you are. But definitely the world needs more... Um, reformed future vision of how we can all be served by the best of ourselves. I hope that this helps you. Take care. Pisces, if you are a Pisces, then this Libra eclipse is happening for you in your eighth house. Ooh, it's a tough one. The eighth house is the house of, house of death and taxes, <laughs> meaning that no matter how you try to avoid them, they're going to come for you. They'll both come for you, right? So the eighth house is all of the things we're afraid to say that we need to say. Uh, the eighth house is, put it this way, it, it, as a Pisces, 
you've kind of been an ostrich for quite a while and you're not, maybe you're doing, maybe you're doing you, right? With uh, Aries being your second house of self-worth and value from the work that you do in the world, maybe you're always kind of a doer and you're not necessarily comfortable with the notion of just being, right? And so this eclipse will help you to see, hopefully, how you have kind of obfuscated yourself in partnership with a lot of busyness and not and so in that sense you've kind of been cheating your partner and cheating yourself from what you actually need rather than face the terror of speaking the truth that's a really heavy thing for our pisces right who really um sees the world in such a kind of caring and empathetic way but might necessarily not be understanding about how um, all of that compassion, yes, absolutely serves you and serves others, but it also lets you off the hook of being truthful. And that's an unpleasant truth for a Pisces. But with Saturn in Pisces, there might not be any getting around with it, getting around it. And better to make that change now, better to kind of say the unspoken thing, right? Uh, speak the words that you think might actually kill you if you say them, rather than letting it go until the eclipses move into your uh, first and seventh house, right? Because when they move into the seventh house, when the south node moves into the seventh house of partnership, it might cost you more dearly, right? It might cost more of your self-worth and value as a person who really gives up themselves in service to others. So as, as terrifying as the kind of eighth house can be, right? It's not gonna it's not gonna be all your fault if you speak the words and someone dies. Right? That's the worst case scenario for every Pisces. And you might not die, which might be the best connect case scenario for a Pisces, but it's really time to face those fears. I think that Venus being in Scorpio in your ninth house, maybe a, a person who's kind of seems a little rough around the edges and maybe um, speaking something or articulating or demonstrating something that you don't want to see is a kind of a darker truth about yourself that you've been maybe working overtime with all your busyness and your work to avoid. Think about it, Pisces. Again, I'm Jennifer Swales from Honeybee Astrology. Please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for being here. Until we connect again, take care.